Hey everyone, it's Paige and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So the Beauty vs. Beast match was something that I was talking about for a while. It was at Geneva National and I was supposed to be playing against John Daly. Well, <laughs> there was a lot that happened, so much good and some things we need to talk about. So let's just get right on into it. So I know everyone is wondering what happened to John Daly because it was the Beauty vs. Beast match. We have been promoting this for a very long time and John Daly was not there. Jerry Kelly had to fill in for John. Everyone's like, what happened? So <laughs> here's what happened. I We knew that John Daly was having some knee issues and so we kept reaching out and asking, hey, is this still happening? If not, like, let's reschedule, totally fine. Everyone's very understanding of injuries. It was a go, go, go. There was nothing else that we heard besides, yes, this thing is still on. I even talked to John Daly a couple days before the match and he was like, I will be there. I'm super excited, can't wait to play. And in my mind, I'm like, yep. <laughs> That's it, like we're gonna go play. Really late the night before, there were some rumblings of potentially John might not being able to play because of his knee, but could still show up and you know ride around, still be a part of the event, and I would just play. And there was still no confirmation. It was still going back and forth. Can he, can't he, no one knew. And next morning, <laughs> like 8 a.m., I get a call and I hear that John Daly is unable to play. He's also unable to even just come out and ride around in a cart. And so uh, they said Jerry Kelly will be able to attend. We got really lucky because Jerry Kelly lives in the area pretty close by. I think it was an hour drive and he was willing to do it. So thank you so much Jerry Kelly for stepping up and filling in. I will say yes, I you know I was disappointed with the situation, but it is what it is and no hard feelings anyway. Originally it was going to be a match. We were gonna play from the same tees and it was going to be a, a skins match. And so whoever won the whole would, you know, win a certain amount of money and, you know, so and so forth until whoever won the most skins. But since Jerry Kelly is at the top of his game, uh, before he came out to this match, he finished second in a Champions Tour event and is just firing on all cylinders. And so I was like, one, um, that's not happening because I will get absolutely smoked. I mean, he is an amazing player and especially if they had plans to play from the same tees, I was like, it, it's not gonna, <laughs> it's, it's just not fair. And so we came up with this format where it was basically a birdie shootout. So anyone who made a birdie that was 2K towards charity, we were supporting veterans. And if you made an eagle, they like doubled it or quadrupled, quadrupled it? I don't even know if it's tripled it. I don't know, but we were kind of making up the rules as we go, obviously, because the format got completely um, mixed up and changed and you just have to go with the flow. So it was just go as low as you possibly could. We played the par threes on the same tees, but he played back and I just played uh, the tees that they had set up for me. I was very nervous. It was a lot of people there. They said over 2000 people showed up and just walking the course with us for the entire time. So thank you to everyone who uh, came to support. It was such an incredible event and to see so many people there come out and walk 18 holes with us was something that was truly special. So now let's talk about the most important part, which is the golf. So we were at Geneva National, they have three golf courses there. They have the Palmer course, the Trevino course, and the player course. We played the player golf course. It's a beautiful golf course. It was an amazing shape and they set it up in a really fun way where you know we could make some birdies. Jerry Kelly took full advantage of that. This was the best round of golf that I have ever seen from someone that I've played with, and it wasn't even close. Jerry Kelly made, well, there, there's some discussion on this. I say that he made 10 birdies and two eagles. He said that he made nine birdies and two eagles. There was one birdie that, so we were bringing, it was really fun. So we were bringing people from the crowd over to like help us read putts and they would hit a putt first. And there was a kid who made the putt and they counted it, but it was like 
I mean, three a three footer, Jerry would have made that. So that's why I say I count 10 birdies and two eagles, uh, but you do the math. He shot in the 50s. He shot in the 50s. I have never seen that before in person. He could not miss. Every single drive was like on a string. It was perfect. Every single approach shot, he had a good look at birdie. And the one green I think he missed, he chipped in for birdie. So everything was firing for him. It was so incredible to watch, to watch his, his wedges and how he struck the ball. Everything was just perfect, absolutely perfect. He putted well, he did everything well, and it just looked so easy. And he had this like attitude of just kind of like, I don't care, you know, whatever happens, happens. And it, it almost puts it in perspective, like to shoot low scores, you almost don't think about anything. We, uh, we were talking and I was like, I'm nervous, are you nervous? And he said, absolutely. And I was like, even for this? He's like, definitely, everyone gets nervous. And if I'm not nervous, then it means that I don't care and that I shouldn't be doing this anymore if there isn't that little bit of excitement. And he said, most people go against that. They try to not use their adrenaline. And in golf, especially, you see people trying to calm themselves down in, in deep breaths. And he's like, that's very important, but your adrenaline is a superpower. You want to use it to your advantage. If you if you can channel it and use it, you're going to be hitting it farther and better. And so that really put it in perspective for me because I was like, okay, I always see this as a negative and it really freaks me out. But now it's like, okay, this is something that you can use to help you. And my full swing when my driver got a little bit squirrely on just a couple holes, actually it quite well but for me, but he hit him as a shot. So he was just like, boom, boom, boom. And um, I hit one left and he said, what you do is you, you, you like change your body angle and lift up and you look at it. So just keep your body angle. And that was really helpful because that's a, that's a tip that we can all incorporate in our swings. It's not something that's highly technical where it's like, okay, now you gotta feel like you're doing this or you gotta do this. I was doing everything I was supposed to do that Jonathan taught me, but I wasn't doing the one thing that is so important is keeping your spine angle and just turning through it. I was lifting to look at it and to see where it was going. And that's one of the worst things that you can do. So don't like lift and look. <laughs> you wanna keep your spine angle and turn through it. On top of that, Jerry Kelly is one of the most like nicest genuine human beings I've ever met. He worked so well with the crowd, with the kids that he was bringing out. He told really funny stories. He said, when I was first out on tour, obviously no one knew me and there was a pro-am before the event <laughs> and he filled in for John Daly. John Daly couldn't make it. And so before you know they teed off, his playing partners were saying, oh, I mean, I'm so disappointed, you know, I was, I was supposed to play with John Daly. Now I have to play with Jerry effing Kelly and Jerry Kelly overheard. And so he walks up, shakes this guy's hand and says, Hey, I'm Jerry effing Kelly. And so till this day, he's known as JFK. I, I turned around, went over there and shook the guy's hand and said, how you doing? I'm Jerry fucking Kelly. <laughs> really lightened the mood, broke the ice. Obviously there was a bit of an elephant in the room of, you know, everyone there found out really early on that morning that, you know, John Daly wasn't going to be playing and they all handled it really well. And I think it had to do with, you know, Jerry Kelly's attitude and, you know, just saying that story on the first hole, everyone laughed and it was, it really kicked off a great day. So now let's talk about my round of golf. I was extremely nervous because you guys know I have course anxiety. And the re one of the biggest reasons I didn't make it on tour is because up here, I just could never handle pressure well. And anytime people were watching me or anytime I had to like keep a score, I just would choke and I'd get so nervous. And anytime I do events like this, it I get really bad anxiety and I started working with Jonathan Yarwood. He is an incredible swing instructor. And about three weeks before we had my first lesson with him, and I, and I took a big jump there because either if you make swing changes, sometimes it takes a while for them to start to feel comfortable. But I just knew that I had to do this and it was something that I felt comfortable doing. And he just explained it so clearly that it just clicked for me. And so we made really subtle changes that actually look quite different in my swing 
to help me under pressure because I don't have a lot of time now to practice, but one thing I wanna make sure that I'm, I can always do is play well under pressure, which is something that I couldn't do before. I would just let my mind take over, and since I had such a, an athletic golf swing, and it was all about feel, sometimes if my tempo or my timing wasn't right, it could get out of whack really quickly, and so we made some changes to help with that. And so I was nervous, but I felt a little bit more calm and especially preparing with shot scope and working on my data and seeing where I needed to improve. I really did try to prepare for this match because I wanted to show up and I wanted to play well. I ended up shooting 66, I made six birdies. I felt great out there. Um, the first drive I hit, I was shaking like a leaf and I hit it right in the rough and I was so nervous because normally when I miss is left, I'm like, this ball is not going left, this ball is going nowhere left, so it went right. And I had this side sloping lie. It was in the rough, over water. Two, over 2,000 people were watching me hit and I nailed this iron shot. I absolutely nailed this iron shot. And it was one of the best feelings I've had in a really long time that I was able to pull it off when it mattered. And throughout the rest of that round, um, I, I played really well. I had some drives that were a little squirrely, but all in all, it was such a fun day. I played well, I handled the pressure, and I didn't let it affect me, which, um, which was great. So yay, <laughs> claps for me. So all in all, it was absolutely incredible. I wanna thank the Geneva National staff for all of their hard work and being able to pull this event together with some curveballs that were thrown our way. And it turned out to be a really, really incredible event. I wanna thank Jerry Kelly for stepping up and coming in and putting on a real show for everyone. I wanna thank everyone for coming to this event. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this, but the feedback has been so incredible. So we're trying to think of a way that we can keep this going or do something like this with a charitable aspect. If you have never been to Geneva National, make sure you go and check it out. It's a really great area, so many amazing golf courses. The people are so nice. Like you, you can't even believe that people are actually like truly this genuinely nice and they are. All the people who came up to me, all the nice things that they said, it was a really special couple of days and um, I'm forever you know, thankful for all the experiences that I get to have, um, but especially when I go to Geneva National and the amount of cheese that I ate <laughs> was well worth it. Um, so make sure you make that Wisconsin trip. You will not regret it. So much coming up um, and I just want to thank you all for coming along with me and sharing these journeys with me and these amazing experiences that you know I get to do and I try to make them as as um as great as possible so you guys can feel like you're you know along with me on this really crazy wild ride so I hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a comment down below like this video subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next Thursday